How's it going everybody? Aloha, my name is Garrett Moss, professional waterman, FII free diving instructor, and team member Spiro for Alchemy Spearfishing, a team composed of some of the world's most elite spear fishermen internationally. And today I'm going to be describing to you what it's like to hunt in an ocean with sharks, Mother Nature's most apex predators. I have a lot of experience in the ocean all across the world and have dealt with dozens of species of sharks in multiple situations. And I'm going to show you and tell you what to do in certain situations and how it's going to benefit you the most and keep you out of danger and also more importantly keep the shark out of danger. If you come across a shark, any species of shark, you're either going to be viewed as a predator to that shark or you're going to be viewed as prey. So you make your choice on what you want that shark to view you as. If the shark starts swimming towards you and you know that you or anyone else around you can't get out of the water, you stand your ground. You let that shark know that you're confident. You don't show it any fear. Sometimes you might want to even swim towards a shark and advance towards a shark so it might be a little bit apprehensive to swim towards you. They're opportunity feeders. They don't like to be threatened. Every shark has its own personality and every species of shark behaves maybe a little bit more aggressive or less aggressive than others. When you come across the shark, just try to figure out what species it is. Figure out if it's aggressive, how, how threatening the shark may be to you. How big the shark is, how small the shark is. Maybe the, the, the posture of its pec fins, um, the way that it's moving around the water. Is it curious? Is it hungry? Is it being aggressive? Is it being passive? Um, these are things that you're going to be wanting to look at if you come in contact uh, in, or in the vicinity of a shark. So just because a shark might come into your area where you're at in the water doesn't mean that you have to get out of the water right away. Whether you're snorkeling, free diving on a competitive uh, free dive line or you're, or you're hunting, uh, maybe with some chum in the water, doesn't necessarily mean that you have to exit the water right away if a shark's in the vicinity or if a shark's there. It's not going to come up and bite you right away. Most of the time, most sharks are going to study you and make sure that you're not a threat. If you want to pose a little bit of a threat to the shark, you show it confidence and you stand your ground. The sharks are opportunity feeders and they're not going to be, want to be threatened. You stand your ground and that shark is going to respect you just like you respect the shark. You're a predator in the water with the shark. You're not prey to the shark. It's going to be curious not viewing you as prey, but it's going to be curious viewing you as a fellow predator and maybe thinking that it can snag a meal, especially if you're a spear fisherman and you have some fish in the water or chum. They have a very, very heightened sense of smell. So they're going to be smelling the scene out just like a dog would to see if there's anything that they can scavenge off of you. On the contrary, if you swim away from the shark, maybe to shore, in the direction of shore, or the direction of a float, or of the boat that you're um, diving off of, and you swim across the surface of the water creating bubbles swimming away from the shark, you're gonna get it curious as to the fact that you might be prey, and the shark could possibly take a bite out of you at that point if it gets close enough. So I recommend not swimming away from the shark, facing it head on, and standing your ground, showing the shark that you are a fellow predator in the water. If you're standing your ground and you're showing the shark confidence and you're showing the shark that you're not fearful of it and it's still approaching you and you're studying the body behavior and you might see that the shark is kind of aggressive, uh, what I would recommend doing, especially if you have a spear gun, is using that as a barrier in between you and the shark. The shark's most sensitive areas are gonna be its nose where it has tons and tons of receptors and it has a lot of nerves and it can feel a lot of things even if it's not touching the shark. Also, the gills of the shark are very sensitive as well. So what you can do is you can extend the gun out creating a, a barrier in between you and the shark and if the shark's gonna swim close enough to the tip of the spear, it'll probably poke itself in the nose if you have it pointing in the right direction and it'll uh, turn its direction 
it when it, once the spear hits it and it'll deter the shark away from you, making it think twice about coming back because it didn't like the pain and what it felt. If you poke the shark once and it comes back again and you poke it a couple more times, then you might want to consider getting out of the water, especially if there's more than one shark around. If one shark out of, say, a group of 10, maybe you're hunting blue water out on a fad or a buoy, or you're hunting in blue water where there might be a few sharks hunting in a pack, you might want to consider getting out of the water because one of the sharks might get a little too aggressive. If one gets aggressive, then the others will feed off of that initial shark's aggressive energy and it'll be a domino effect and you definitely don't want to be caught in a situation like that. Um, it could be very dangerous at that point. So once it gets to a certain point, you might want to think about getting out of the water. Use your best judgment at that point. When you're in this kind of a situation, your senses are going to be heightened. Your consciousness and your awareness is going to be heightened to a point to where you've never felt before, especially if it's going to be a very, very intense situation and you're going to be able to think more clearly than you ever have. And your judgment is going to be your best judgment because you're going to be in fear for your life at that point. As spear fishermen and free divers, we have to be extremely focused on holding our breath and being in touch with ourself and being in touch with what the task is at hand. And sometimes that takes away our senses from our surrounding areas. And sometimes when this happens, you have a shark that'll sneak up on you. You got to remember, you're in their environment. They can maneuver within and out of the scene like you don't even see them. You might not even notice that they're there, but they can see you and they can swim up to you a lot faster than you think. So you always want to have your awareness around your area uh, and be aware of what your surroundings are. Always keeping an eye around just to make sure a shark doesn't sneak up on you. Sometimes if you're kicking a head up against the current to find a, a certain spot where you want to drop on, it's always a good idea to dip your head down and look behind you as you're swimming, scouring the area, getting a 360 view of what's going around at that point, making sure that there's no sharks in the area. Always wanna be aware of what's around you, even though you might be immersed into what you're doing and focusing on yourself, especially your breath. In a situation where you shoot a fish and there's sharks in the vicinity, there's no right or wrong way to describe on what to do um, in that kind of a situation. Every situation is different. And like I said, you're going to be thinking as clearly as you can when you're in this kind of a situation. Your, conscious and your, uh, your consciousness and your awareness is going to be heightened to a level that you probably don't normally feel. So you're going to be using your best judgment in those situations. A lot of the times what I like to do is I like to bring the fish up to me as fast as possible and bear hug the fish to let the shark know, hey, this is my fish. I'm a predator as well, and you're not going to be able to get my fish because it's mine and, you're not, and I'm not going to let you get it. Another situation might be to where it might be a good idea to let the fish swim away and have the shark's attention focus on that fish instead of you, especially if they're getting quite aggressive. And then you can focus your, uh, on getting yourself out of the water and out of harm's way and paying your taxes by giving that fish to those sharks. In Hawaii, and my area of Hawaii on the island of Maui where I hunt, we have a lot of tiger sharks. And the tiger sharks that we hear are quite, are quite large. Um, they range anywhere from usually around eight to about 15 feet. So um, all the way up to about uh, three meters long. Um, these are big sharks and, uh, and they're the apex predators. When they show up in the ocean, everything around knows. Everything stops, time stops. It's a majestic creature. And they, for the most part, will approach slow um, especially if you have chum falling, maybe some flashers in the water, um, you and a couple buddies are on the surface with a boat or a kayak maybe next to you. It's a scene, it's an unnatural scene that the shark's not necessarily used to and they're inquisitive to come in and check this scene out. They have a very heightened sense of smell, they want to smell things, they want to see how you're going to react when you're around them. And so when this happens, you want to make sure that you've done what I described. You want to hold your ground. Sometimes the shark will be a little bit apprehensive to come in and it'll just swim away. 
Other times it might stick around the area. And sometimes it's an enjoyable experience, especially when you know you have a shark using your best judgment. You know that you have a shark that might not be too aggressive and you're well versed in the water. You can stay in the water with the shark. Maybe pull out your camera, shoot some photos of it, dive down, swim with the shark. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this unless you're well versed in the water and you have a lot of experience around the sharks and you know how to study their behavior and what their intentions are to the best of your abilities. My face is in the water, I'm breathing up. My, my intentions are pointed down to a reef about 30 meters um, down below the ocean. And I was focusing on a nice coral head to make a drop on when I had my sixth sense heightened, uh, quote unquote, and the shark swam, uh, and then I had a big tiger shark swim right underneath me, a big female, um, and she didn't bite me, uh, obviously. She didn't just swim up and bite me. She was studying the scene and swam right underneath me, and as I saw the shark that was swimming underneath me, it was wider than I was. It could have easily fit me in its mouth with one bite. Um, she swam up and studied the scene, she swam up to my boat, which was anchored up a little bit down the way, maybe 10 meters away, and, uh, and didn't bite me. And so I was a little bit frightened when I found out that the shark was underneath me and swam by, and I was surprised. Uh, but at that point, uh, I knew that it wasn't incredibly aggressive um, by the way she was swimming. So I swam over to my boat where the shark was and my flashes were hanging down and my chum bag was uh, hanging in the water. And I wanted to get my chum out of the water and the flashers out of the water just to get the shark a little less inquisitive um, due to um, the smell of the chum being out of the water and maybe the flashy things out of the water, which are my flashers. So as I did that, I got everything out of the water, put my gun in the boat and took my camera out and the shark went down uh, towards the bottom, swam around for a few minutes, and she started to make her way back up to the surface uh, with, her, uh, with her intentions set specifically on me. So with my experience and, and wanting to um, photogra uh, photograph the shark and maybe get some video, I dove down, almost playing chicken with the shark. We were going head on head with each other. And nine times out of 10, they're gonna swim um, right up to you and then they're gonna veer off at the last second because they're gonna see how confident that you are in the water, which is what I did. Uh, with this head-on-head -head, um, situation, I got some great footage, some great photos, and I got to get um, some photos of really detailed parts of this shark. Uh, and it was just an incredible experience. She made a few passes at us. Uh, I didn't necessarily touch the shark, even though I could have easily, but I was diving down on her, swimming on the side of her just like a remora would, uh, and she accepted me and I accepted her, and she knew that I was a fellow predator in the water just, um, just, uh, just as um, respected as she was in the water. Um, and it was a great experience. Uh, I got some great footage, some great photos, and, um, and that situation ended off. She swam away, uh, went her way, wasn't aggressive whatsoever, and I got back in my boat, went into, the, into, uh, into land, the boat ramp, got my um, memory card on the computer, started editing photos and, and video. And the next day, I got a, a photo from uh, one of my, um, my best buddies, Phil Cothran, who had some photos of a tiger shark that he sent me and he let me know that I swam with her five years ago almost to that day. Uh, brings goosebumps to my skin, it's just kind of an ex a spiritual experience. Um, I don't know if she remembered me, I doubt it. Um, I didn't remember her, but comparing the two photos within that five year time, she had some new scars on her um, and I have some new scars on me. Um, she's still hunting in the same area, I'm still hunting in the same area. Uh, and um, she's just a beautiful creature in the water and I respect her and I know how to handle her and uh, my experience in the water and my good judgment um, gave us the opportunity to cross paths twice, um, both of us without being hurt. Um, and keep in mind, this is a shark that's tasted human flesh, killed probably at least one person. Um, so uh, that just goes to show that even though that a shark has killed someone before and does view a human being as prey, you can also still backtrack and make that shark think twice uh, into knowing that you are a fellow predator in the water.
Thank you.